Hello and welcome to another EDC review on my channel. Today we're checking out another multi-tool from Leverman and go over in depth over its features, key aspects and what might make this an ideal tool for your needs uh, or not. And firstly, most of you already recognize or have seen this tool before. It's quite a popular item out there. And my reasoning for picking this up was I wanted something really sturdy, full sized, a sort of do it all multi tool that would be within reach when I need it. And the search seemed to be the right choice for my needs. And firstly, it comes, um, comes in a pretty inviting box. Open it up, and in it, you'll find a little thank you note followed by a quick startup guide. That shows you how to operate the thing. And then of course the surge and then this nylon sheath. All right. And first of all, this tool has some heft to it, I must admit. Weighing at around 12.5 ounces or 335 grams. This is going to be the main drawback for a lot of people out there. And I mean heavy when compared to other to other tools on the market. Even even the mud weighs le less than this, believe it or not. And um, here's a weight table to prove it. Before we hop into the tool set, let's go through some specifications for this multi-tool. First and foremost, this is a large frame heavy duty multi-tool. So it's going to come, come in a 4.5 inch or 11.5 centimeter frame lengthwise. Uh, total width in close position is 1.5 inches or 3.8 centimeters from edge to edge. And the overall thickness is a very solid 0.75 inches or 1.9 centimeters. So let's start with the outside tools first. The main blade comes sharp out of the box. Let's make a run a quick test. All right. Lengthwise, we're looking at 3.1 inches or 7.87 centimeters. So it has no blade play whatsoever. Lockup is solid. And the blade geometry works well for really any tasks. The only downside to it is that it's only available in 420 high carbon steel. But I mean, hey, edge retention isn't that bad and it's easy to sharpen and maintain. And uh, of course, it's cheaper than 154CM or, or S30V steel. Uh, but here's how this steel compares against uh, other steels. Alright, second blade comes with a serrated edge that excels at cutting paracord and fabrics. It's uh, thick along the spine. And it's not pointy, so you can slip it on very seat belt or clothing for an emergency situation. It has some jimping on the back of the blade. And it allows you to blindly tell uh, as you pull it out of your sheath or pocket which plate you're about to open just by running your uh, thumb across this jimping over here. And as I was saying, most of the edge is serrated, but they've also left a flat portion at the end of it, which uh, works really well for uh, draw cuts. The main key feature on this item and one of the big selling points for me, which is exclusive to the surge only, is the Bosch T-Shang adapter, which allows you to add a wide variety of jigsaw blades to it. Now, it comes with a file pre-installed in it, which has a cross-cut combination for wood and metal on this side. It has an edge file and a diamond-coated side, which can also be used for self-maintaining the blade when you're in a rush or have no other means to do so. And you'll also be able to find the saw blade in this little plastic pouch that would also fit in your nylon pouch. Now the issue here is that most aftermarket blades tend to be a bit thinner than the proprietary Leverman file and saw. And in order to avoid unwanted rattling, they've added this little tension bar here that applies pressure on the blade in order to keep it still. And I'll quickly demonstrate, we just have to take this file out. 
Okay, and I have a pack of Bosch saw blades here for wood, metal, and plastic. Let's go ahead and pick this metal one, place it in, and close this thing. Now, it has little to no rattle. rattle. The blade has a bit of side to side and up and down play, but it will get the job done. You won't, however, be able to close the tool because of the increased saw length. Well, actually, you can close it if you pick one of these uh, smaller blades. But what I do, I usually just uh, pick four blades that I find most useful for my needs and just carry them in the sheath. Another great tool, the outside accessible spring-loaded shears. They got a nice and healthy click to them. The thumb rest is thick and has some jimping on it, so the grip is pot on. It has some good tension on the spring and they have handled every task that I put in front of them so far. Um, let's go ahead and make a quick cut test. I've got some sort of thick manual here. Should be able to cut right through it. No issue. All right, let's check the pliers. Open this up and look and behold, these are full size pliers. They're uh, extremely robust. There's a needle nose section with this area on the, on the end of it that's um, extremely useful for pinching and fine work. There's the regular plier area and then the removable wire cutters made out of 154 cm steel. And also behind the pliers, we have stranded wire cutters in the first notch and then a pair of wire crimpers in the second notch. Now let's go ahead and make a quick test and see if this works. We have some wire here. Focus. Okay. And they did quite well. Let's do another one. Now as far as the inner tools go, let's open this up and see what we have in here. This is an excellent can opener. I have opened up cans in the past and this design proves to be quite reliable and fast in that aspect. You can also use it as a bottle cap lifter. I mean it's not excellent but it will get the job done. And the engine is pretty sharp. You could easily strike uh, for instance a ferrocene rod. And also on the bottom of this tool we have a decent enough wire stripper. The way it works, you place the wire onto these cutters and then rotate in order to score and cut the insulation. Or another way to go about it, you could just close the multi-tool, depress the lock, and get some wire here. And sort of trap the wire between the body of the multi-tool and the wire strippers. And then just rotate and pull. And it did a decent enough job. Another great tool, which gives you a lot of options, is this bit holder, which comes with the Philips flathead combo bit pre-installed in it. And the great thing about it is that it's compatible with the Leverman's proprietary bits. They are flattened two-sided bits. 
you can get a bit kit from their website it has a total of uh, 21 bits so that's a total of 42 bit, bit profiles to choose from and i only carry the ones i fre frequently need and use here and this is only like half a bit kit okay and then there's also the leverman bit extender which gives you a bit more reach and also is compatible with uh, qu quarter inch bits it has a retention spring on the inside of it which uh, latches onto this pre-cut area on the bits and personally i'm not too fond of this design there are times in which the bit gets stuck in it and takes quite a bit of force to pull out and the way i'd go about it i just remove the i'd remove the spring and uh, place a magnet on the bottom of this hole and that way you'd also get some good retention without any further complications let's see what we have on the other side open this up Firstly, an oval for drilling holes. You can strike a ferro rod with this. You can use it as a punch. You just uh, put the strand through this sewing eyelet and drive it through fabric in order to stitch and so on. A large flathead, which I mainly use for uh, scraping or prying stuff off. And then uh, another smaller flathead. And this one kind of bugs me. I would have preferred uh, the eyeglasses screwdriver adapter that's present on the charge and wave series instead of this I mean I see no good I see no reason for adding another flathead when you've already got a bit adapter with uh, dozens of bits to pick from and as a last tool the one I mean one that I use most frequently is this uh, stamped ruler it has measurements on each side and it measures up to 8.5 inches or 21.5 centimeters from a safety point of view and I really appreciate they took their time to integrate the system which is present on all the Letterman tools that have outer accessible blades. Now, let's just say that the tool's open, and you'll notice that the blades won't budge. And what happens really is that while deploying the pliers, there's a small pin on each side, here and in here, that gradually slides out into the thumb hole of each blade. And this is just an added safety feature that prevents injury. And finally, from an ergonomic standpoint, the inner and outer edges of the handles are rounded, so there's, there are no hot spots whatsoever when applying pressure. I mean, contrary to other models out there, such as the Super Tool or the, or the Rebar, for example. The tool set and ergonomics are great, but how should you carry it? The Surge comes uh, with a really sturdy nylon pouch that will fit most of your gear. Let's open this up. It has a really nice snap to it. It will handle the tool itself. The saw blade pouch in which I have four blades only half a bit kit so do pick the bits you're mainly going to need wisely and on the sides you can also carry the bit extender or a ferro rod a pen a flashlight or what have you the stitching is really well done and there are no signs of it coming apart the one that came with the charge is still in great shape after a year or so as you can see the main thing that bothers me about it is the sheer size of it. And it, it also catches onto your shirt from now and then, but thankfully there are other options out there. The 4.5 inch leather box sheet. It's slim in profile, but the leather quality is not that good. So it will have a pretty worn out look after about a year or so of use. But hey, it's cheap, slim, and it doesn't come apart. And then there's the large heritage sheath, which feels a bit more premium. It only comes in this tan color, but unfortunately I've seen a lot of bad reviews in which people complain about the stitching on the back that holds the bell loop attached coming undone after a few months of use. And really that's a bit disappointing, they could have done a better job with those stitches or why not they could have used some uh, rivets instead. But yeah, losing your tool because of some faulty stitching is not a risk I'm willing to take. And a bit more premium than that is the Ainsworth lever sheet. Stitching seems to be solid on this one. It's a bit more pricey. You could easily get a Rev or a Wingman for that amount of cash. But hey, quality sheaths come at a price, I guess. The extra large Molly compatible sheaths. Quite an expensive at 15 bucks, and it will fit the whole big kit. It has velcro closure and you can carry some other items on each side. So really the only option out there for having a full tool kit in one sheath. And finally, another carry option, you can slap the Wave or Charge series pocket clip on it with. 
The only downside to it is that it might have a bit of side-to-side -side play. It doesn't rattle or anything else, it's just a bit of movement. And this happens mainly because the clip was purposely designed for the Wave and Charge series. But still, I have carried it like this and it works perfectly fine. Now to wrap things up, let's go over some pros and cons for this tool. Pros first, it's highly modular, you get the Bosch T-Shag adapter, you get the bit exchanger, which pretty much make it a jack of all trades multi-tool really. You have outside accessible shears and full size pliers with removable wire cutters. It has a robust build and uh, there's plenty of cheap options out there. As far as cons go, there is no premium version for this tool and why the need for so many flatheads. But I guess in the end, from a value point of view, I consider this tool to be a top pick at around 130 bucks, sitting somewhere between the Wave and a Charge series price-wise. It's a heavy build tool that won't let you down in your time and need, and if you manage to overcome the weight issue, it might just be the perfect everyday carry for you. That was my review for the Leverman Surge. Thank you for watching my video, and I hope this has been of some use to you. Don't forget to hit subscribe in order to stay tuned for more DC videos and comment below for any questions that you might have. I'll see you in the next one.